Oh, man. Jeez, I got so many thoughts with this. I don't even know where to start. Well, yeah, I do. Actually, it's the most expensive card on the market, aside from the Asus Strix. And it has the best warranty on the market. Yet, there's no publicity. Nobody talks about it. There's nothing online about it. Why? This thing is freaking awesome, and I feel like there's a lot of room to push it. Some quick key facts. $1,900 US for this product. It's the only fully liquid cooled model in the market that comes out of the box. Triple radiator. And guys, nobody's talking about it, but Gigabyte is giving everybody a four year warranty on this thing. And when you look on YouTube and Google, you try to do your research there is almost no information about this product and you might be wondering why i wondered why too so i'm going to give you a little bit of information that i have on it um the experiences that i've had since i've got it uh, i got it on launch day i uh, actually was delivered the following day and uh, i've been running it since and um we're going to talk about finding some key points and whether uh, this might be a good uh, choice for you all right chances are if you're considering buying this product you've done your homework you've done your research you're ready to spend the cash and you want to know whether this is going to be better than an air-cooled model or just as good or fit your case or gonna have problems down the road or 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 all these questions you have in your head um, the first question that a lot of people have is can you replace the fans on this and you can see right here that this cable is on the outside of the cold water pipe going into the unit Now I haven't broken this down yet and I probably will at some point and look inside but my assumption is that this cable is accessible to a connector inside which can be pulled out and changed so that the fans can be replaced I assume that is why Gigabyte did not route this inside the sleeve which I mean to be honest it looks kind of tacky to me and it makes an otherwise premium product feel kind of cheap. And other than that, you can see that I've got the power adapter with the four PCIe power cables, all four plugged into four separate rails of my 1300 watt um, EVGA supply down here. <clears throat> We've got the uh, hot pipe out into the radiator and the cold pipe in into the card here. You know, one of the things I immediately noticed as I was touching these parts during testing is that this pipe does get very warm and this pipe stays pretty cool. Right now, this thing is running at full power. It's pulling about 500 watts of juice at this moment. Hear anything? No? That's it. That's as loud as it gets. It's overclocked. It's running just under 3 gigahertz. It's running a benchmark. Triple screen right now. 7,600 and... 80 pixels by 14, 40 pixels. There's some current statistics. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm blown away. Why is no one talking about this card? There is nobody out there making videos on this card um it's really strange it's weird now i'll post some some thermal numbers that are kicked out by hardware info in a minute but let's do some physical checks and just to see what it tells us, if anything. All right, on the wall, about 
28, 29 degrees. In front of the GPU. About one degree hotter. Not even. And it's going down. Inside the crack in the card. What are we at here? 45 there cold not the hose intake this is the hot Looks like it's dropping it about somewhere between six and eight degrees, not a whole lot. When I tested this earlier, the maximum I read here was about 42, and the minimum I read over here was 32. And again, these are these are not valid readings of any sort. Uh, I just tried to keep a consistent point where I was taking the measurement. Um, where the fittings on the uh, the intake and outtake of the cooler are. And just touching it to the side, this is warm. It's the, the radiator is a little warm. It almost feels warmer than the card. Or the Max Hotter. But it's not burning. Alright, this has been running for about an hour now. It's not going to get pushed harder than this, at least with this benchmark tool, which is running, again, ultra settings on these three screens. Let's have a look at the uh, NVIDIA numbers. What are they telling us? Oh, lower power draw. Clocks down a little bit. One thing I would like to know is anyone that does have a 
uh, an air-cooled 4090 when that thing is cranking. How are the fans running? Are, are they blowing at full speed? Are they barely moving and nice and quiet? Uh, how is that working for you? And uh, also, I haven't seen other reviews on what the memory temperature and the GPU temperatures are running at under those stress loads, but I would really like to see a comparison video um, even between this model and the uh, the Supreme Liquid X model uh, and then against all of the uh, the air-cooled models. Are there any big differences or, you know, are they all running at the 60 to 70 degree range on the GPU? Um, you know, and, and the MOSFET too, the, the, uh, the power, how is that being cooled, uh, on the other systems? And is that limiting their power draw? I don't know. Now, I just want to restate that I've only had this for a few days. I haven't had a whole lot of time with it. Most of the time I've had has been benchmarking some playing games, testing it, and it has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, nothing less than that. I'm going to post some specs and some benchmark results from the testing that I did. Um, and as I spend more time with this, I'll do a more in-depth review uh, down the road. And uh, if you've got questions on performance, any uh, game titles, uh, or just general discussion on this model versus other models, um, feel free to uh, drop a comment down below. Uh, I always take the time to uh, to respond to everybody and uh, and have good way two way communication. In closing, guys, I wanted to uh, apologize for the cable management. I had some uh, measurement devices plugged in to validate the actual power draw, uh, to validate some of the information that was provided, and uh, more importantly, the results of the testing. And I, I I'll uh, add a slide here. Um, after the end, or a few slides after the, actually the end of the commentary here, but uh, the GPU never got above 60.5 degrees Celsius, the VRAM never got above 78, and I believe the CPU, the GPU hotspot didn't get above, I want to say 70, it might have been 67, but I'll, I'll add the slide here in a second. But uh, for now, that's all I got. If you got any specific questions, want me to run any specific tests, um, I'd love to hear your uh, comments and questions. Um, thanks for watching.